Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey gang, good evening and welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose with me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guide and servant on the healing journey. What's my name? Big Papa Brian Post. Hope everyone's doing fantastic on this tremendous Thursday. Check out that scenery behind me. This is Lake Hefner in Oklahoma City and uh, I'm popping on here early this evening because I'm going to be taking my brother and uh, my new sister-in-law well, new as of this summer. They got married sometime. I'm going to take them out to dinner to celebrate their wedding this evening. Hey, Jill. And so just wanted to get on here real quick and go into part two of the trauma responsive classroom. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, part one yesterday. If you, if you didn't get a chance to listen, please go and, and check it out. And I know I had a question that came in today and I forgot, completely forgot to check uh, Messenger and um, look at that because I was going to talk about it this evening. But anyway, so part two of the trauma responsive classroom for my amazing teachers out there getting ready to tackle a new school year and for all you amazing parents who are getting ready to take your amazing children into these classrooms. I want to talk to you about how we, how we communicate with our children about their, the challenges that they have. So the trauma responsive classroom is one that is equally it's it's equal it's equal mindfulness but it's also equal education in that you have to you have to be able to start helping children create a framework around what I call their stress sensitivity and that's what I would encourage you guys to use that language as well that when children have experienced trauma they are sensitive to stress and so school has all kinds of sensory environments that expose children to overwhelm and the thing about getting exposed to overwhelm so you may think well a classroom is really not that stressful you may think a school's not that stressful if that's your perspective I encourage you to go to one if you haven't been in one for a while but there's so, there's so many lights, there's so many sounds, there's so many varying temperatures, so many varying smells. There's so much different interaction. All of it activates the amygdala. And the significance about that is the amygdala then opens up the brain stem. So it's the amygdala which is really sensitive. And because it's so sensitive, it dials up, it opens up the brain stem, which is where all the trauma is. So it's really important to start communicating to children about their stress sensitivity. And when you're having conversations, whether it's the teachers having conversations with the parents, parents having conversations with the teachers, teachers with the kids, vice versa, it's important to create a framework for kids so they start to be able to comprehend for themselves why they feel so challenged in certain situations. So let's say we're starting a new school year and you know you have a child who's got some stress sensitivity. So what if you took, you know, five or 10 minutes and you sat down with that child and you said, hey, listen here, Johnny, I know that you've had some things happen in your life and I understand that those things have been really stressful for you and probably made you feel really sad and really scared and sometimes something happens that may stir up all those feelings and you don't even know why and it may cause you to be angry and in past years it's caused you to have a lot of problems well i want you to understand that i understand what you're going through i understand that you are really sensitive sometimes and then when you feel really sensitive you start to feel real stressed and then we know that stress drives our fear and it also drives our behaviors that we're usually not proud of I want to be able to work with you and I want to be able to create a relationship with you where you can feel safe with me so that when you're feeling stressed, when you're feeling overwhelmed, you can come to me and you can let me know. Maybe if I'm busy, you can, it's between you and I, you can stand up and walk to the back of the classroom. You can go to this area in the classroom. You can come over and just tap me on the shoulder and I'm going to be doing my, my best 
to pay more attention to the things that seem to really stress you out. And I think if if we can communicate with one another this way, I think we can really make it a great school year. What do you think? How does that sound as I'm saying those things to you? Does that sound familiar? Does that, like last year, were there times when, when you really struggled and you just didn't feel like anyone really understood? So now you're opening up this communication but you're also creating this framework for the child to start to be thinking about themselves in a different way. And I just want to tell you, my teachers out there, if you've got a parent who's bringing this information, like this video to you, they've already been working on creating that framework of communication and understanding in their home. So getting you involved and getting you on the same page is going to just go that much further in helping this child feel more empowered to reach out for help when they are feeling stressed, to ask for support when they're feeling scared. A lot of kids don't even ever have the framework of their of their fear and their emotions because we've never created it for them. We've never given them an option for it. And so I just want you to understand that when kids are, hey, Debbie, and Debbie used to live, oh, right, oh, that's so cool. Hey there, Stefan in Netherlands. I just want us to be able to start creating a framework of, of communication for our kids going into this new year that empowers them instead of disempowers them, that helps us work towards prevention instead of intervention all the time, that helps us set up an opportunity for them to thrive and succeed in environments which are usually pretty difficult. So hope that's helpful. Again, part two, trauma responsive classroom, opening up to communication, creating a new framework for that student in your classroom. It all starts with you and I. It all starts with the adults in their lives who are willing to be more proactive and be more engaging and just to do some things differently so we can do our best to make this the best possible year for this child and for your whole classroom. This isn't just the stuff I'm talking to you guys about isn't just about for traumatized children. It's for all children. And people are always like, well, what do you do if you don't have a child who's traumatized? Well, that means they just don't have the same stress sensitivity, which is fantastic. But everything that I talk to you guys about, everything that I share with you applies for all children. And so I just want you to keep, it, keep that in mind. So remember, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to do the same thing we did last year. And we can continue to expect different results and, and, and expect different things by doing the same thing. And that's just operating out of fear. That's just operating out of negative conditioning where we can stop and we can slow down. We can take three to 10 deep breaths. We can keep learning. We can analyze, we can investigate and study and we can choose love. And when you do that, you're gonna have the most amazing school year possible. If you have questions, I know you guys are going in these, these, my teachers are going into these classrooms getting ready. I know my parents are, are, are getting ready to take their children to these schools. If you have questions, reach out to us. Send us a message in the messenger, a, a, a DM, whatever they call it, and let us know because we want to help you guys be successful because it helps us feel good. And it also, your questions that you bring to me, I swear a thousand other parents have those same questions and concerns so you're not alone we're into the we're in this together and we're here with you every step of the way so god bless you guys big papa loves you let you check out lake hefner for just a little bit